The Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. Now, after the wise men had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night, and went to Egypt. And he remained there until the death of Herod. There, was, this was to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. When Herod saw that he had been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated, and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years old or under. According to the time he had learned from the wise men, then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation, Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared suddenly in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he had heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father, Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, Happy New Year. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Shall I remove this or is there back? Can you hear? Okay. Okay. Both mics. So the story goes, there is a doctor and an engineer and a lawyer sitting around discussing which of their professions first came to be in existence. Well, the doctor insisted it was medicine. He said, because then when God removed Adam's rib from from he got him's, Adam's rib, he performed surgery, so it must be medicine. Well, then the engineer said, no, I think it's engineers because first there was darkness and a void and God created the earth and the stars and the moon. So that was science, it must have been engineers. But then the lawyer said, well, where do you think the darkness and chaos first, still, first came from? <laughs> Darkness and chaos and evil, they are always with us. It is part of our reality. And even in this season of Christmas, when we want to come here just to sing Christmas carols and celebrate the season, it seems that we had to hear this message of darkness and chaos and our evil, the reading from Matthew today. And when I first read this, I thought, what is a story like this doing and our text at a time like this. It's Christmas, we just wanna celebrate. But then after I thought about it a little bit more, I thought, well, you know, the past couple of weeks, we've all probably eaten too much, maybe spent too much money, and the kids have been home from school too long. We've had maybe too many in-laws in our house for too long. The house is a mess, the world is a mess. Maybe this is a perfect time for a story just like this. We need this story. So the story of Matthew that's told today tells us that when Herod learned of the birth of the Christ child, he was frightened, he was scared, and so was Jerusalem. History tells us that Herod had always reacted from a place of fear because he was feeling threatened that another king might be born to challenge him. And this violent act towards the residents of Bethlehem was just a one in a long series of things that he had done to protect his throne. We learned that out of fear, Herod had killed most of his own family, including one of his favorite wives. He had many. He killed a brother-in-law, a mother-in-law, three sons, along with Jewish nobility and their families. So thus, it was totally reasonable to Herod to execute a number of young boys in an effort to reduce the odds of someone taking over his throne. And Jerusalem was frightened too, 
not of the Christ child coming, but of Herod and what he would do to their newborn baby boys. So this is a tough story, and it's a story we don't like to tell, especially this time of year. But as the lawyer pointed out, evil is, is a reality. And history does repeat itself, doesn't it? Such atrocity happened in Egypt before the Exodus. It happened on the way to Egypt a century later. It's a, perp a perpetual lesson that reminds us that the most vulnerable suffer sometimes when the most powerful are irresponsible. In the United States alone, we have 18 million children that are with adequate medical and dental care. Studies show that every minute a child is molested or abused in our own country. In a larger picture, every 10 seconds, somewhere in the world, a child dies of hunger. If Jesus were born today, he would face similar problems of survival. You know, and we've gone, grown so accustomed to this news that sometimes we've just become complacent. We hear news of evil and threats all the time. It's the kind of lives we live these days in the midst of terrorism, who just as King Herod had no regard for human life and randomly attacked the innocent. And so we become a little bit complacent. But the evil in the world is exactly why we need this story. It's the very reason for God's intervention into our world. The gospel shows this interesting tension today, because on the one hand, we have this extreme of Herod's means of securing his power. It was dark and murderous and evil, which necessitated the Holy Family to flee to Egypt. But then on the other hand, we see Joseph's dreams and the guiding of how God provided and guided, guided the Holy Family out of that trauma. And even the locations of where this story took place is really interesting. Egypt was historically a place of oppression for God's people. But yet today, we see how it provided a place of refuge for Israel's Messiah. You know, as Christians, we know and we're told that in this dark world, right, the light shines and the darkness did not overcome it. We know that in our heads. But sometimes it's really hard to see that. We're in the, we're in the midst of tragedy, isn't it? One of the first questions following a tragedy is, where is God? Right after the death of a loved one or a terrorist attack or a school shooting or whatever, or the war in Ukraine, we tend to ask ourselves, where was God in this situation? Well, I remember that question being asked many years ago when I was on a mission trip with a group of youth and adults. We had gone to Lithuania and to do some mission work, and then we went over to Germany one day, and well, not one day, several days in Germany, but one day we went to Auschwitz and visited the concentration camp there. I don't know if you have ever, any of you have ever been there or one of the concentration camps. And you talk about a place that's filled with evil and darkness. It's sickening. And some of the youth were in tears. Uh -huh. Some were almost sick to their stomachs. And at the end of our tour, one of the youth had asked the pastors, like, where was God in the midst of this situation? Where was God? And the pastor replied, God wasn't in the rulings and the injustice and the suffering. But God was with the prisoners. God was with the prisoners when they sang songs to each other to uplift each other's spirits. God was with the prisoners when they told jokes to one another to just help the days pass by, to relieve the misery of another human being. In the midst of misery, we do find God. No, we can't explain all the tragedies and the darkness in the world. We can't fix it, unfortunately, or defend it. But we can tell the story. The story of what Jesus really came to do. Because our homes aren't perfect, our lives aren't perfect, our world isn't perfect. But he was born because we do have imperfect lives, and we are in need of him. 
The truth is, yes, Jesus was born and a lot of children died soon after because liberation costs something and grace isn't cheap. The rulers of this world don't want us to put our faith in unconditional love. They want us to be scared. They want us to be afraid. They hope that we'll forget to tell the story to one another and what Jesus' birth sets in motion for us. So you can bet that Jesus would have known this story. He too was a refugee in Egypt because of it. And like Moses, he spent a good part of his growing up years in the in-between spaces. It must have made him a little bit sensitive to what it meant to be to be an outsider, what it was like to be living on the edges, looking in. And he must have felt like he never really quite fit in. But he also made him aware of what gift his life was to others and that could never be taken for granted. Other, pet, other families in Bethlehem had paid dearly when he was born, whether he liked it or not, but he was linked to them. And in some ways, Jesus was a bit of a Holocaust survivor himself. You know, stories are fun to tell, aren't they? I don't know if many of you told uh, bedtime stories to your kids when they were little. I know we did. And as I reflect back on the stories that my grandparents taught me, I treasure those. I loved that when my grandparents would get out their old photo albums and we would go through all the black and white pictures and they would tell stories of, of their hardships in their lives. But not only did they tell the stories of the tragedies and the darkness and the hardships, but in every story they also told how God guided them and led them through those challenges. How God always provided people and provided for everything that they needed that God has always been with them. And those stories revealed grace to me and that God's presence would always be with me. And that's the story that I wanna keep on telling. So on this New Year's Day and on the year and the year ahead, maybe we can follow the example of Joseph who was obedient to God's instructions. And may we continue to tell the story of how God brought new life to the misery of, of Jesus and his family, and he does the same for you. So maybe Herod's story is appropriate for a time like this. It reminds us that, especially in the midst of our misery, that God is present. Let us continue now to worship by singing and telling the story, go tell it on the mountain. Amen.